गौतम विश्वास इज देयर इन द चेयर मे रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर गौतम विश्वास टू प्लीज टेक ओवर गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरीबॉडी वेलकम टू द एनिवर्सरी जनरल मीटिंग एंड दिस सेशन एज ऑल ऑफ यू नो दिस इज ऑन इंजीनियरिंग साइंसेस एंड टू डे स्पीकर आर प्रोफेसर एम एल मिंजल एंड प्रोफेसर शंकर के पाल सो द फर्स्ट स्पीकर इज प्रोफेसर मिंजल आई हैव द प्लेजर टू इंट्रोड्यूस प्रोफेसर मिंजल प्रोफेसर मिंजल हैज बीन ऑन द फैकल्टी ऑफ द इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस सिंस नाइनटीन सिक्सटी एट he has over 200 publications in uh, several top tier professional journals his publications includes articles in the international handbook uh, and uh, textbook in the broader areas of vibrations uh, he has books and monographs in the areas of noise control also he has several chapters in the uh, well known handbook uh professor munjal has guided 18 doctoral students and executed over 125 industrial consultancy projects in different aspects of noise control and vibrations uh he is an expert in the area of quieter designs with particular application to automobiles since its inception in 1998 professor munjal has been convener of the facility for research in technological acoustics since 1988 he has been a distinguished international member of the institute of noise control engineering of the united states recently professor munjal has been elected as honorary fellow of the international institute of acoustics and vibrations he was the chairman of the national committee for noise pollution control from 1997 to 2015 he was a president of the acoustic society of india during the years 1999 and 2000 he has been member of the editorial board of the international journal of acoustics and vibration since 1996 Professor Munjal is a fellow of the Indian National Science Academy as well as Indian National Academy of Engineering. He is a member of the European Academy of Sciences. He was honored with the Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Prize in Engineering Sciences for the year 1986 and the DRDO Academic Excellence Award for the year 2009 after his superannuation in 2010 he served as honorary professor of the institute for 5 years ine distinguished professor professor for 3 years and insa senior scientist for 5 years currently professor munjal is aict distinguished chair professor and insa honorary scientist at iisc today he will be delivering his talk on towards quieter technologies professor munjal please
Jadi dolar. Hello, good morning, everybody. Uh, today, I'm uh, going to talk to you uh, about something that I've been working for the last five decades, and that is quieter technologies, which really includes noise control of existing machinery, as well as designing for quietness. And uh, I'm whatever I'm going to talk to you is basically uh, everything has been tried, as, as you have been just told by Professor Biswas. Uh, I have executed more than 125 consultancy projects. So everything I'm going to speak to you is a summary of what has been tried. Okay? So it will be a very different kind of lecture. I'll not go into mathematical details at all. It will be strictly engineering facts. So I have named it as towards quieter technologies. Uh, because it's always a journey that has been going on and it will continue. And I'll be sharing with you things that, are, you know, you can directly use as engineers. Next, please. Okay, I'll, I'll just use this. This should be in the next one. Okay. I hope everybody can read there because this pointer is really not very strong. Now, noise may be controlled at the source, in the path, or at the receiver end. The cost of noise control increases as one moves away from the source. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, it is most cost effective to really d control the noise at the source. And not only that, you go a step further, you design the machine for quietness, and that is the best. In fact, that is what we have been trying to do. As uh, Professor Biswas told earlier, you know, I had this uh, facility for research in technical acoustics for almost two decades. And main idea was to develop quieter technologies. And even the, our teaching to the students was such that they should design for quietness. You know, always the retrofit is very costly and, uh, uh, you know, involves hassles. So in, in this lecture, we list and illustrate all possible techniques and strategies for noise control of an existing machine, as well as choice or design of quieter machines, processes, and industry layouts. Now, Noise of a machine may be reduced at the source by adopting some of the measures or practices listed in the following slides. These are the titles of the slides that I have given here. I'll be taking one by one later. So first is, we should select a quieter machine. As a designer, you know, you will be uh, outsourcing things quite a bit and make sure that you select quieter machines, quieter processes. You should select lossy materials. Now here I'm uh, re referring to the fact that, you know, as in uh, engineering, that we say stress over strain is, uh, you know, uh, elastic modulus. So here now, most of the time, the elastic modulus will be complex. The real part is called storage modulus, and the imaginary part is it's a loss modulus. The ratio of the two is loss factor. So when I say select lossy materials, I mean materials with high loss factor. And particularly, it's important that at lower frequencies, it should be more. You know, in fact, uh, you, I li like to tell you, most of the uh, man-produced noise is low-frequency noise. And I also must tell you, God has been very kind to us that uh, we, he uh, you know, our hearing sensitivity is uh, much less at lower frequencies. So God has already protected us against our mistakes. Now, I, next is use quieter processes or tools. 
you know, invariably as a designer, you'll have several choices. And therefore, it's important that you use quieter processes and also the tools. Next, of course, this is a really technical thing. I'll ta talk to you a little later. Reduce radiation efficiency. So basically, this radiation efficiency means the ratio of the noise produced uh, divided by the vibration. Then having designed a machine, having installed it, it's very important that you maintain it for quietness. Often you'll find that our older machines or automobiles or whatever, uh, they are much noisier than the newer ones. And that is because we may have designed for quietness or we, would have, we, would have, we may have got a good quiet machine, but we don't maintain it for quietness. Okay, and that, that is very, very important in the field of noise control. And the last thing I'll be talking in detail about design of flow machinery for quietness. Because 50% of the entire noise in the world uh, is produced by flow and the flow machines. So therefore, it's very, very important that we design our flow machinery for quietness right from the beginning. Now, coming to the first part, select a quieter machine. What do, what do we mean? Uh, select a quieter machine from the market, even if it's relatively costlier. Often, this additional cost is less than the cost and hassle of the retrofit noise control measures. You know, in uh, Hindi, there is a uh, proverb, it says, Mehenga roe ek bar, sasta roe bar bar. And this is very much true in the field of acoustics. You know, so don't worry, I mean, you may have been, you may go for a machine which is uh, a little uh, costlier, but it's worth it because if you look at the lifetime cost, you know, you would be really wise. So therefore, I'm, I'm referring, I'll come back to this again and again because it's very important that we should not, uh, you know, say that, okay, oh, we can get it done, do it later. Any retrofit is very, very messy as well as costly. A machine would generally be quieter if its moving parts were fabricated to closer tolerances. Now, this is where we start right in the beginning when we are trying to fabricate machine. We make sure that all mating parts, they are done, I mean, manufactured to as closer tolerances as possible. Uh, this I want to actually uh, stress a little in India. You will find that general manufacturing practices are such that often a person who designs, who makes the drawing, he just puts some tolerance, you know, just like that. And he thinks that if we put more tolerance, it will be cheaper. Yes, it will be cheaper to make, but that machine will be noisy right from the day one. Okay, so it's very important that we manufacture to closer tolerances. And that's what I'm saying here. Manufacturing mating parts to closer tolerances reduces micro-impacting between the parts. This in turn reduces the mechanical impact noise reduces vibrations, reduces wear and tear, increases fatigue life, increases the interval between maintenance outings, and increases the accuracy of a machine tool. Now, continuing with the selecting the quieter machine, I would like to say overall, manufacturing to closer tolerances is a good engineering practice and makes economic sense in the long run. In other words, the lifetime cost of a quieter, though costlier, machine is relatively lower. In fact, one particular example which I came across, you know, often you will find German machines, uh, they are invariably quieter, and of course, they are costlier. But then that extra cost, you know, uh, you know, is sort of paid for itself. You will find that, you know, nothing goes wrong with the machine. In fact, you know, it's a, it's a very important thing I'd like to share with you. Often we use it also for human beings, that uh, person who makes too much noise, he's most probably, uh, you know, not uh, talented or he doesn't know what he's talking about. It's something very similar here. In any machine which is noisy, it's a bad machine, not just from noise point of view. You will find that other things also have not been taken into account. And therefore, you know, I'm, if you had to use one criterion to make the right choice, go for a quieter machine. Uh, in fact, you know, because uh, as was told in my introduction, I was uh, uh, chairman of the National Committee for Noise Pollution Control for 18 years. 
uh, advising the Ministry of uh, Environment and Forest and Central Pollution Control Board. And there, you know, we really have done several things that, uh, you know, uh, maybe I'll tell, tell you a little later, okay? But main thing is that, you know, we have tried to stress this point that people should really uh, man try to manufacture uh, quieter machines. In fact, uh, initial shock actually came to people when Indian machines could not be sold in Europe simply because, th you know, that didn't, they did not satisfy the acoustic standards in Europe. And uh, unfortunately, you know, this we were actually losing it doubly. Because what happens is any people like the people in Europe would like to make sure that Indian machines don't come in because they have to compete against that and our machines are cheaper. But not only that, they would use the noise to make sure that officially that machine that uh, machine cannot enter the country. In fact, they have now uh, specific codes and they say that if this, this, this noise exceeds there, that cannot even enter the Europe, you know. They have really made it sure, you know, that these lobbies are very interesting how they work. They may really use all sorts of these kind of things to make sure that you cannot uh, export your machines into Europe. But noise is one of them. And in fact, it was that that we tried to address and we have succeeded quite a bit over the last 20 years. Now, human desire to obtain large power from small power packs, particularly for aero engines, motorbikes and automobiles has resulted in a race for high-speed engines and turbines. However, noise control at the source can be achieved by selecting large, slow machines rather than small, faster ones, particularly for stationary installations of captive diesel generators, compressors, etc. Now, this is another thing I'd like to uh, share with you, spend a minute on this. You know, everybody wants that you should have a small power pack. Now, when moped, etc., came into the on the uh, into the market, everybody wanted that it should be small machine giving you lot of power. So, what what happens is, you design a machine for 6,000 rpm, even 8,000 rpm, and go to turbines even 30,000, 40,000. All that is very good because you want a power pack that gives you more power from a small bit. But you ask yourself, is it necessary? Often, you know, we get carried away and we, we, st we stop thinking about these matters while making our choices. So what I'm trying to say is, I repeat that part, uh, you know, that uh, noise control at the source can be achieved by selecting large, slow machines rather than small, faster ones. You know, basically, I, I can just uh, share with you the noise generally increases to third, three to fifth power, third to fifth power of speed. In other words, if the speed is doubled, you will find that noise increases by nine to 15 decibels. And vice versa, if you can somehow design, go for, uh, you know, uh, I mean, machines running at lower speed, you will have inherently, uh, you know, uh, uh, less noise. But more than that, you'll also find that machine will have much more life because nothing goes wrong with that because it is running at slow speed. So we really, really should ask ourselves that, you know, do I need while designing, do I need to design for higher speed? And most of the time you'll find your answer may be no, you don't need it. Now, coming to the lossy material uh, side, I'm saying mechanical impacting sets different parts of a machine into free vibration. The sheet metal components of covers vibrating in their natural modes radiate noise into the atmosphere. Free vibration of sheet metal components can be reduced by fabricating these components out of lossy materials like plastics or for that matter rubber. That is materials with relatively high loss factor. Now we could consider replacing, like I'm this example I'm giving you, we could consider replacing metal gears with plastic gears. Of course, such materials are very low in strength and therefore cannot be used in high stress locations. So we have to also be careful about that part. Now alternatively, we could make use of free layer damping or preferably constrained layer damping for the sheet metal components or covers exposed to the atmosphere. For example, circular saw blades should be replaced with damped blades. Now, 
Regarding this, the quieter process is a tool, so their desirability, I like to say that one very popular way of reducing noise in energy conversion is use of electrical motors rather than reciprocating engines or gas turbines. The use of high velocity jets for cleaning must be avoided as far as possible in industry. We should seriously consider replacing pneumatic tools with electric tools and pneumatic ejectors with mechanical ejectors. Now, forging down to the net shape in a single step die is another source of high noise in workshops. We must consider replacing single operation dies with step dies and rolling or forging with pressing. Now, what I want to say is that uh, when, you, when a person designs uh, a die, uh, he gets into the temptation of designing in such a way that one single, this one, and finally takes the final shape. Now, that is definitely not good practice at all. What is being said is that you have a step tie, so it does, first step does only brings that to one shape, then second, then third, fourth, and though it is slower, but the, I mean, when I say slower, it's slower only in seconds, so it doesn't mean anything, see, okay? But then, you know, in, when you do in steps, you'll find the noise is much less. Now, this is a very uh, important uh, uh, thing I want to uh, tell you. Uh, really, a good engineering concept is that you should increase the contact area. Now, let's see. What we mean is increasing the contact area is a potent method for reducing noise at the source in material handling. Therefore, use of belt conveyors instead of roller conveyors recommends itself. For the same reason, helical gears have been observed to produce much less noise than the spur gears. And spiral cutters are quieter than straight edge cutters up to uh, almost 10 de decibel. And, and let me tell you, 10 decibel uh, perception wise uh, is perceived as half the noise. Okay? And therefore, this 10 dB is very substantial. Now, probably the best example of noise reduction by increasing the contact area is use of belt drives in place of gear drives and pneumatic tires instead of solid steel wheels. You can see the pneumatic tires is what we use on automobiles and solid steel wheels in the railway. So you can see you know, the, how much difference it makes because pneumatic tires automatically in the contact patch, it is the contact area is much more. Whereas in the railway, you know, you have steel rolling over steel. So contact area is very, very small. So all that uh, I mean, uh, force transfer is taking place in very small area and that is very, very noisy. Uh, and that's why I'm saying at the end, and it's a very important statement. As a matter of fact, uh, development of pneumatic tires made of rubber and nylon strings was probably the most important step towards reducing automobile noise and preserving the pavement. And the best example was uh, observed by people in uh, USA when Henry Ford brought out his first car on the outside, and it had nothing of this contact area, no open. Nothing, I mean, it was just something working. And it was so noisy that most of people, they really felt that some kind of, uh, some ghost or drag on some, something, some has entered the city and they ran and into the, uh, their houses and closed the doors. Okay, they didn't even understand what was going on. And not, more, more, not only that, uh, by that time, the first drive he had taken to the city, all the roads were com uh, completely broken. They just could not take that kind of load. So what I'm trying to say is that that day, you know, I mean, this basic lesson was learned right from that day that it's not necessary to have a machine that runs. Uh, it is also important that it does not, uh, you know, have those problems of very low contact area. Now, this is a very important point for the mechanical engineering point of view. Reduce radiation efficiency. Now, I'm saying for a given a vibration amplitude, noise radiation from a structure depends upon the radiation efficiency, which in turn depends on the shape and texture of the vibrating surfaces. Now, flat, continuous plates are efficient radiators of sound and therefore must be, they must not be used actually, they must be replaced with curved or ribbed panels or perforated plates or woven strips of metal. Uh, just to give you the technical side of it, two sides of a plate radiate outer phase waves and perforations expose both sides of the plate simultaneously, resulting in substantial cancellation of the holes 
or periodic gaps. Uh, this effect roughly represents conversion of monopole mechanism of noise generation into dipole mechanism, which has intrinsically much lower radiation efficiency. And in fact, this particular statement I am making, 50% uh, of all machinery uh, noise reduction that I have done, it is all by making use of this part. I ask myself all the time, can I gender convert ma a monopole radiation into dipole radiation? And most of the time, my students also, you know, I mean, they have been working on these concepts and we have been able to come out with very quiet machinery. And that is very important for mechanical engineering as well as public. Now, this is one very interesting thing I'd like to tell you. Uh, this mechanism of noise reduction can be and often is utilized in design of hopper, stillages, or tote boxes for material handling operations. Often the noise in a factory is increased dramatically when the metal ore castings or waste material is tipped into a tote box made of sheet metal. If this tote box or stillage were made of interwoven metal strips, uh, noise reduction the order of 20 decibels could be obtained. And this represents a tremendous noise reduction at the source at minimal cost. You know, here, I mean, this, uh, I was woken up to this problem in a very dramatic way. I went as consultant to BHEL uh, Trichapalli, and they have two uh, units there. One of them is uh, making uh, uh, a seamless uh, steel uh, uh, pi pipes. Now, a pipe is made, finally, when it falls, it comes in a tote box. And it makes such noise that whole, you know, it's like a uh, minimum 300 meter long workshop. And people, you just can't hear another person at all when this falls, okay? And noise was so much, I was much younger those days, I, but still I could not remain there for more than 45 minutes to complete out my readings. The, you know, just the, you understand the noise I'm talking about. Physically, I could not uh, stand that part. Okay, and poor fellows, you know, the workers, they are, they are working, I mean, they are earning, they are living, and because of that, you know, they have to work, and uh, most of them have lost more than 50% of the hearing, okay? And in fact, when I brought out to the management this thing, they were saying, please, please don't, please don't talk, please, please, we will touch, discuss it later, you know? I mean, I, I could see their part, it could become a union problem and all that, but what I'm done to say is, we people, it's our duty to make sure that we give the right environment to the workers just because they don't know, you know, that doesn't mean that they should suffer. And this is our duty as engineers that we should really be conscious of the environment, both from physical as well as human point of view. Now, this principle can also be applied to cover transmission couplings, baggage trolleys on railway platforms, like side covers or mechanical hammers. In fact, railway platform thing is, you might have seen, you know, I mean, the toll is being taken, and all because, you know, it's a flat plate is used. It's a big radiator of sound, and no, no damping at all. So with small things like not spending more than 50 to 100 rupees, the trolley can be made much, in fact, quieter, not only quieter, cheaper also, because you don't need a flat plate. You can use strips, and then save money on the material, and also make sure that the, everybody on the railway platform is not unduly disturbed. Now, I was talking, talking to you that it's also important that we should maintain for quietness. What do we mean? Often it's observed that a machine that has been in use for a while is no longer as quiet as it was when it was first installed. In order to avoid this additional noise at the source, it is necessary to have the rotating parts of the machine balanced at site, not just at the supplier's premises. And also we should monitor the condition of the bearings continuously and have them lubricated regularly, and then replace or adjust the worn or loose parts as soon as detected, and then follow the periodic maintenance schedule specified by the supplier. The, uh, all this is doable because, you know, supplier gives you all the instructions. You just have to take them seriously. Now, if a machine is thus maintained, its noise level would not unduly increase with use or age. Now, Finally, increased noise is often a symptom of poor maintenance of the machine. If not attended to, the primary function of the machine would be compromised and chances of its failure or malfunction would increase alarmingly. 
Now, this is what I was trying to tell you, a very important subject I want to come to, design of a flow machinery for quietness. Uh, most often, noise is radiated by cooling equipment. As a rough estimate, I was telling you, half of all noise in the world emanates from fans, blowers, and heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. And noise control of flow machinery at the source may be affected as follows. Now, I'll just be talking a few points here. First is provision of adequate cooling fins would reduce or eliminate the need of fan for forced convection cooling. Then either the fan would not be needed at all or a small, relatively quieter fan would do. Centrifugal fans are generally quieter than propeller fans of the same capacity working against the same back pressure. Again, backward curved blades produce less noise than the forward curved blade. And See, computational fluid dynamics can be used to design quieter blade profiles like airfoil blades. In, incidentally, you know, these things all have been done, particularly for defense, you know, for example, in a submarine, you know, the whole space is so limited and it's so noisy and poor people have to stand that kind of thing. So, I mean, the, I mean we don't have even a place to put silencer or anything. There's no place at all in the submarine, if you have seen what I'm talking about inside. Okay, so but then all you can do is make sure that you design the blades as aerofile blades and then you will find that the minimum shear layer uh, kind of thing will be there and therefore noise will be much less. In fact, Professor Sandhanaigam, unfortunately he's no more. So he uh, joined with me and uh, he was really expert in uh, uh, this turbo machine design and all I had to tell him what matters from the noise point of view and together we were able to reduce the noise in the submarine by seven to eight decibel just by doing this, re redesigning the blade. And last thing I'm telling, if the flow entering a fan does not have uniform velocity profile or is highly turbulent, then the fan would produce more noise than usual. Therefore, we should locate the fans in smooth, undisturbed airflow not too near a bend, for example. Now, continuing, large, low-speed fans are generally quieter than smaller, fast ones. For shop floor cooling, it's better to provide each worker with small individual fans than installing large, high-speed fans at one end of the workshop. Again, noise in high-velocity flow ducts increases substantially at the sharp bends due to separation of boundary layer. Therefore, therefore, adequate CFD modeling may be done and suitable guide vanes may be provided to avoid flow separation. You know, most important thing is flow separation. Make sure that the flow does not separate. It remains attached to the boundary layer. You know, this is a very important thing. One thing that, you know, in one line can tell you all how to design flow machinery for quietness. Make sure there is no separation of boundary layer anywhere. Then flow noise or aerodynamic noise from subsonic jets increases the six to eight power of flow velocity, which really means if the velocity is doubled, the noise will increase by 18 to 24 decibels. Therefore, we should design the flow ducts so as to maximize the cross-section of flow streams. Incidentally, this, consider con this consideration led to the development and use of high bypass turbofan engines for transport aircraft. In fact, the kind of aircraft now all of us travel in uh, they would not have been there if this thing was not done. In fact, after the Second World War, uh, everybody thought aircraft, these aircrafts are too uh, noisy for normal human beings. Only soldiers, uh, because they have to fight for wars, only they should be there. No. But once this was done, you know, 10 to 20 dB, you know, noise was reduced by bypassing most of the, uh, the air and then re remixing it towards the end. And good thing is that incidentally, the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the, I'm just saying here, uh, just one second. Yeah, I'll just read out the last sentence. It reduced the jet noise by 10 to 20 decibel while re retaining the same thrust. Moreover, propulsion efficiency of turbofan engines is higher than the corresponding turbo. So we, that also, we, also, we were also able to s save on fuel. Now, drastic reduction of pressure, as in high pressure venting of air or superheated steam in a single step, 
produces very high sound pressure levels. This may be reduced by means of a multi-stage expansion trim wall or a series of adequately designed orifice plates. Now this was, I mean, in fact, one of my first projects in 70s, I, was, I had just joined as assistant professor at IASC, and we got a call from Fertilizer Corporation of India, Sindri, and they were having this problem. They were, uh, you know, whenever something would go wrong, they would uh, close that wall, I mean, pass it suddenly, and all this air had to go out. Imagine 18 kilograms per second of superheated steam at 200 bar pressure being uh, vented out. And the noise was so much when he went there, there was not a single bird in that area. All of them had either you know, been killed or they ran away from that area for long ago. Not a single bird in the whole area. Anyway, so what I'm trying to say is all we had to, we did was, I'll just tell you here, it's very easy actually. Look at this. You know this, uh, uh, one more, sorry. Yeah, this one. You see here, now the wall is there, and then we just put orifice plates uh, designed in such a way that instead the pressure instead of from 200 bar coming to one bar, it comes from 200 to 120, 120 to around 70, 70 to 40, 40 to 25, and so on. So in, I use seven stages, and in seven stages, so we reduce the noise by almost 25 to 30 decibel. And then, of course, we put a silencer downstream and further 20 was fixed. So we were able to reduce noise by 50 to 55 decibel. And let me tell you, I was telling you 10 dB reduction means half the noise. So another 10 means half of half. Then 30 means another half of half. You know, like if they, they see, the total noise would come down to only 3% of what it was otherwise. Uh, another ways of reducing noise is you can see here, uh, first one that is we have acoustical shroud which can be attached or it can be standalone type. Uh, in fact, uh, often you know uh, it is uh, it is uh, standalone. For example, I, I I was telling you the Air Force Station in Agra, you know they had this kind of situation. They had uh, just uh, purchased uh, some planes uh, in 76 actually, you know from the from Russia and they were trying to test and it was hell of a noise. Nobody could stand anywhere near that. At the same time, they had to work. Okay, so fortunately, I mean, they got me from Bangalore and I also learned a lot looking at the situation. And all we did was just this first thing, that is, you know, st this uh, standalone portable type of, uh, you know, this uh, acoustical shroud and that was it. So aircraft remains where it is. Shroud, you just wheel in and test it and then put it back in the hangar and continue. So it's a very important thing to do design like this so that uh, local needs are also taken care of. Now, this was all about reducing the noise at the source. Next is noise control in the path. Now for any existing noisy machine, the option of noise control at the source as well as designing for quietness is not there, is not available. So next option is to control the noise in the path, making use of acoustic barrier hood, enclosure, etc., for the casing radiated noise, use muffler or silencer for the duct bone intake exhaust noise. Incidentally, this is my research area in which I have been working the last 50 years, muffler design, analysis and design of muffler and silencer. In fact, the book I wrote in 1987, which was published from New York, and till today, it's the only book in the world on that subject. Uh, then this uh, vibration isolator, to reduce pro propagation of the unbalanced forces to the foundation of the support structure and structural discontinuities. Yeah, this is very important in structural discontinuities uh, that impedance mismatch to block. So I'll just spend one minute on that. Uh, you might have seen that uh, somebody is drowning and you show you showed instructions from uh, outside, he cannot hear it, or vice versa. If he's asking for help, you can't hear because uh, characteristic impedance of water is several orders more than that of air. So almost there's a 40 dB transmission loss right at the interface. So this is what happens in natural this one, but we, we use our mechanical in engineering ingenuity in several situations to create that impedance mismatch so that any structure bone sound cannot go further or the, I mean substantially it's reduced. And that's what is being talked about. Structural discontinuities or impedance mismatch to block propagation of the structure bone sound. 
Now, this of course, generally you know, but I'll just like to tell you something here. The damper plays the same role in absorption of structure bone sound as acoustically absorptive material does in dissipation of airborne sound. Now, this is illustrated like this. You, we can have either airborne sound or structure bone sound, and for each one of them, either we can have reflective measures or absorptive layers. For the airborne sound, reflective measure is sound barrier, absorptive one is sound absorber or silencer. And structure bone sound, refle reflective is vibration isolator, and then absorptive is vibration damper. Now, in practice, however, noise control measures are not purely reflective or purely absorptive. For example, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me. So I was just trying to tell you here, <coughs> in practice, however, noise control measures are not purely reflective. They, I mean, often it is both, so that is what is being said here. Similarly, last line I want to read, viscoelastic pads, which are used most often, they combine elasticity as well as damping. So they use both reflective as well as absorptive principle. Now this is just to illustrate to you uh, one thing, the it's a schematic of different measures for reduction of structure bone sound. You can see here that, uh, you know, uh, main thing is that you have basically electric motor or prime as prime mover, the pump. Now you really make sure that, you know, finally you put them on the same plate and that plate in turn, you know, is on vibration absorbers. Okay. So substantial part of this vibration will be reflected back. So you'll have only 5 to 10 percent going down. But even what goes then down here, you don't want it to go further. So you really make use of other things that are being shown here. You know, for example, you know, you have these pipes. You know, you ha have to have that coupling and also make sure that here it doesn't touch this. So you have some air gap and air gap is a good uh, uh, impedance mismatch. Same thing we do on the discharge side also. And then, uh, yeah, these are various types of, you know, the metal spring, pipe hanger, uh, uh, this flat pads, rib pad. But actually, if you see anti-vibration mounts in the market, they would they make use of shear rather than the actual tension. And the shear is much more effective in reducing vibration as well as noise. Now, noise control at a receiver and that's the third option. And this option is the last resort as it were. The receiver may be prote protected from excessive noise exposure by means of ear plugs or muffs, which are really a path controls uh, measure. The rotation of duties, this is very important. This is being done in India now, it was never done earlier. Rotation of duties, part-time removal from the noise environment. That means if worker is trained in two uh, kind of jobs, so he comes in the morning, he works for only two hours in, a, in the noisy area, rest of six hours he works in a quieter area. You know, so that the total noise dosage uh, does not exceed what is uh, good for his health. Otherwise, slowly, slowly, he'll start, he'll become hard of, become hard of hearing. Now, in fact, this, uh, this, I mean, consequent to our rec recommendations to the ministry and all that. Now all industries, uh, they have to test the workers at the time of joining. Their hearing is tested, a record is kept as a function of frequency complete, audiogram is taken, and then every six months they are uh, tested again and again, and they make sure that at the earliest sign of person becoming a little hard of hearing, uh, the necessary uh, things are done, like he's taken off duty from noisy area and given duty in a quieter area and things like that. Now, ear plugs and muffs are readily uh, available in the market. They provide an insertion loss of 5 to 15 decibels for the user, but then the user's functionality may be compromised. He or she may not be able to detect a malfunction in the machine or may not be forewarned 
of the damages arising from a malfunction of machine. So it's very important that this uh, noise controller the so receiver end should be last resort. Because it's a, it's a just, I mean, it's not a good solution at all. Now comparison, I'll just give you, in, uh, to, despite the cost disadvantage, noise is controlled more often in the path than at the source because of logistic convenience and ready availability of acoustic enclosures, mufflers, or silencers. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, noise control at the receiver end may protect a particular receiver from the noise, but would not help others in the vicinity. This comment would also apply to some of the path control measures. Therefore, the noise control at the source or designing for quietness is the most cost-effective way that would help everybody in the vicinity, not just the operator or driver. Uh, just uh, one slide I'll give, tell you, no, when that, that was all about new machines, or et cetera, but now it's noise control of an existing machine facility. What do we do? If there is a complaint about environmental noise due to an existing facility, like captive power station, compressed air facility, or heating, ventilation, air conditioning system, or a workshop, we may proceed as follows. And this I'm just telling you, uh, to tell you what all will need to be done if we have not done what should have been done at the design stage. You will have to make sound pressure level measurements so as to identify and rank order different sources of noise, then calculate the extent of noise reduction required for the noisiest of the sources or machines or processes in order to reduce the total noise in the neighborhood to the desired level. Uh, then identify the paths of noise transmission, the deflector bone as well as air bone, from the major sources to the neighborhood and plan the path control measures. And then estimate the cost effectiveness of different alternatives. Then carry out detailed engineering and installation of the selected noise control measures. And then verify the effectiveness of the implemented measures and work out refinements or corrections as necessary to meet the environmental norms. So you can see it's, it's a lot of work. And uh, what I have been doing is mostly uh, uh, use my students for their project, you know, and they would really go and follow all these steps and learn, of course, learn in the process the whole thing. But main thing what I want to say is it's a, a time consuming as well as costly thing to create, to do this later. Always make sure that you design a machine for quietness or procure a quieter machine of market rather than having to do all this later. Yeah, this is the last slide. Uh, you know, this I want to tell you here, this very nice thing has been done by government of India. Now they have made it necessary uh, to get environmental impact assessment. Now, if I want to set up a factory, I have to get environmental impact assessment done, not only from the air pollution, water pollution, and ecological point of view, but also from the noise point of view. If, if this is not done, uh, you know, you don't get that uh, permission to set up the factory. Or you get conditional thing that subject to your doing it within three months or within six months, et cetera, et cetera, you have to do. But you know, again, a lot of malpractices happen there, unfortunately. Okay, now for community noise, it's advisable that at worst, any facility should not increase background or ambient noise level in a community by more than five decibels, dBA. A means A weighted because our ear is not equally sensitive to all frequencies. So A weighting is done to take care of the, uh, I mean, unequal frequency response human ear. And if complaints arise from the workplace, then regulations should be satisfied. But to minimize hearing damage compensation claims, the goal of any noise control program should be to reach a level of no more than 85 dB. And this is what I was trying to say, that I make sure now, if I am consultant, that no, uh, right from the beginning, from no machine, Noise of more than 85 dBA comes out. Then carry out an environmental impact assessment before a potentially noisy facility is installed. If the projected noise levels at the property line exceed the mandated limits, depending on the category of the locality or area, then either the quieter machines may be ordered or specified, or path control measures may be specified for the relatively noisy machine. Thank you very much. On behalf of INSA, I would like to express profound thanks to Professor Munjal for a wonderful talk.
we can quickly go for one or two questions. Does 3D printing has any role in reducing noise? Pardon? 3D printing. Uh, yes. In fact, uh, 3D printing is, uh, you know, it can be two types. One is additive, other is subtractive. So additive is much quieter than the subtractive because there you are trying to take away the material. And take away ma material means you're doing something that will make noise, whereas additive is very, very quiet. So 3D printing is, uh, you know, uh, uh, what should I say, from the noise point of view, very desirable. But even otherwise, let me just tell you, uh, 3D printing gives us many options, you know, you can, we can exactly do what we want to do regarding making things, you know. So nothing like that. Only thing is you have to make sure that you are able to choose a material uh, which, uh, satisfies requirements of stress, uh, temperature, uh, tolerance, and things like that. So you have to have the right kind of materials which you use for additive uh, printing. Y yes, please. Uh, Professor Munjal, thank you for a very nice and clear lecture. So, you know, recently we have got interested in these uh, jet mills in which uh, in a small co container, you know, th we use high-speed jets for grinding. Oh, yeah. Which makes a lot of noise. Now, yeah. I was just wondering that, you know, the same mechanism that is used in these turbofan, would it work uh, or will the intensity of the jet fall too much for it to be effective for grinding? Yeah, it's actually... Uh, yeah, it is, I'm glad you asked this question. You know, there are several aspects to it. Uh, but so basically, if a, a, an engineer understands what all is needed, he can do it. I, I'll give you a simple thing. Like, for example, uh, you know, you might have seen um, uh, you can, let's say, forging machines or, you know, what you, they use pneumatic uh, ejectors. Okay. Now, now, you have to ask yourself, when you eject, you need certain thrust, and that thrust is uh, equal to mass into velocity, right? So now noise is proportional to mass, but proportional to fifth power of velocity. So what I should do is use that nozzle of a larger, a little larger diameter, but using much less velocity. So, th so the thrust is same, which will dislodge those particles from that point but noise will be tremendously less. In fact, this was one thing I learned the hard way when I went as consultant to several workshops. They were using this pneumatic cleaning. And you know, very unnecessary, I said, and they were using seven bars pressure. Mind you, when those of you who are uh, into this field, uh, you'll know that you know when you have seven bars, seven to one, uh, you'll have a Mach number two, two and a half at which jet comes out. So you have, uh, not only just uh, very, very strong free shear layer, you also have shocks, even oscillating shocks. So that produced racket. So I asked them, you know, say, how did you select this thing? No, it's available in the market. You know, very simple answer, you know. You go to the market, pick up a, press, a compressor, very cheaply available, seven bars. They never understand what seven bars pressure means. How high is that pressure? All unnecessarily. So what I'm trying to say is that if these basic things are understood, then you can make the right choices and so you go in for a process which is uh, basically quieter. In fact, you know, let me also tell you, this uh, thing is a problem in the country. Uh, nowhere do we, do mechanical engineers have any course in acoustics. So often when I go as consultant, my first job is to first educate them so that they can define their problem to me uh, exactly, and then only I look for solution. But in the process, I have found that it's necessary to, uh, you know, uh, teach. And that is how, in fact, when I was ha having the facility for research in technical acoustics, the, you know, Professor D.V. Singh used to be uh, uh, the chairman of that committee. 
And he told me, he says, Munjal, you have been working for so long on this. Don't you think now you should train teachers? Okay, and that is how, and first thing was writing a book. I, I wrote a book on noise and vibration control. Then I took up this uh, uh, program of training teachers. So I first started Bangalore, of course. We trained 75 in the first batch. Then we, I, IIT Bhubaneswar, I did for the Eastern Zone. Then IIT Guwahati. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Professor Biswas was there when I offered that course and all. Okay, so what I'm trying to say, and even Hyderabad, Pune. So I have been doing it. And now th these, these uh, teachers, they are encouraged to uh, offer this course as an elective to their senior undergraduate mechanical engineering students so that, you know, this becomes a you know, uh, standard edition. It is similar to vibration. At one time, even a vibration was not a course. It would be added to theory of machines, just a chapter or two. But now it is very much there a separate one. So I, all I have done is, instead of just vibration, have a course on noise and vibration control. So both are taken care of. So, in fact, I have given solved examples on salt exercise, et cetera, et cetera, all from industry. So, it is being, becoming very popular now. So, Thank you. Yeah. For your purpose, this noise, yeah, I am here. Yes, yes. Uh, noise means any, ki any higher decibel sound only you are referring to noise, right? Uh, yes. But, okay, noise has some other way we know yes AI. yes yes in fact often you know noise we define as unwanted sound and it may be unwanted not just because of the loudness uh, it also is important about the uh, frequency for yeah. example you know at we are much much i was telling you that we are less sensitive at low frequencies right but uh, but in your uh, entire presentation what impression probably i got that you are only talking about higher decibel, uh, if I am right. This lecture was like that. Okay. In 35 minute lecture, I could okay. only go to basic thing like more noise. But okay. vibration is very much part of that. And once I said DBA, you know, A weighted this one. So, you know, so we do play with that. In fact, often uh, I design uh, silencers for what you can call impedance, uh, sorry, frequency transformations. Uh, I mean, reducing the low frequency noise to very high frequency noise. So partly it goes beyond my hearing range of my ears. Or partly even if it doesn't, uh, uh, it goes to very high frequency and there designing is much easy. Any silencer is, is much more effective at high frequencies than low frequencies. So what I do is, instead of the jet I was talking about, so same jet is broken up into 100 smaller jets. And now, because smaller jet means diameter is less, corresponding wavelength that will be produced will be less, that means frequency will be high, and automatically the noise that would have been there, let us say at 500 hertz, goes to 15,000 hertz. And then any given silencer becomes more effective at, at that frequency. Okay. So it's a very complex subject, yeah, yeah. but here I, I try to take for general audience, I was mm. told, I was, you know, that which everybody can. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Professor Bunjal, uh, fascinating lecture. Back in this side, right side, Hello. Pardon? Oh, yeah. You know, uh, two years ago, in 2020, there was a paper in Nature where they talked about, you know, transformation of new types of chemical reactions, new types of molecules yeah. using sound. And, uh, you know, this is a very fascinating uh, uh, discovery. Yes, indeed. I was wondering, you know, all these honking that happens, you know, in uh, roads and various, in, in India, this is totally uncontrolled. Yes. So is there anything known whether uh, such things induce certain kind of unwanted biochemical reactions in, uh, in human uh, physiology? Uh, no, my knowledge is very limited in the, this kind of thing. But yes, it, but it, it is true that, uh, you know, they are, uh, they are coupled, but I really don't understand. Uh, about but you things. mentioned that our ear is controlled. Uh, yes. That's the way the God's design is. Yeah, that's right. And uh, so there must be a purpose, but we d may not have proceeded in the scientific way to analyze such things, perhaps. Okay, no, no, no. Uh, uh, when I said, uh, what I meant was, I don't know, but it has been done. Let me just tell you, there's an international journal called Noise and Health. Okay. Uh, it, it, uh, it is published uh, uh, by, an, in fact, an Indian professor from the University of London, Dr. Prashad. 
So that issue after issue, they, in fact, they, they go into what happens to a fetus before he is born, what is exactly happening, and if the mother is subjected to, you know, higher noise levels, etc., what will happen? They have gone into everything, and very good uh, ex experimentation has been go going on. And uh, in fact, uh, 70 to 80 percent of the people working in this area, they are from the medical side. Uh, they're not from the engineering side, okay? But it is, it is, it is only I don't know, man. I, I, I wanted to say that. Thank you. We'll talk about this. Yeah. Uh, Professor Munchal. Uh, so we have come to <laughs> the end of this session because of time constraints. Maybe other discussions with Professor Munchal, we can continue beyond the session. Uh, we have to, you know, uh, I mean, although undesirable scientifically, but we have to, you know, stop here. Yes, uh, once again, you know, please join big hands for Professor Munchal. Thank you.